So this is a phono oscillator and I think I featured it briefly in a previous video when I was recapping the Webcore 210 and the customer asked me just to go ahead and recap this as well. There's not that much to it and I went ahead and I did it and uh, I don't think it works very well. Uh, check the date on that tube right there. 1 of 52. I believe that is the date code. Although it's got the small base, it's not a uh, octal base. But anyhow, let's go ahead and pop the cover off of this. There's actually no screws in this thing. It just snaps together. And then I'll show you the inside of it here. And I did use an electrolytic as the main filter cap. It did have a wax capacitor and then I replaced those two. Uh, those are 0.47 microfarad capacitors, replaced them with newer updated caps. Uh, this one obviously is the coupling capacitor for the input. And uh, I'm not sure this might be a bypass cap because I know this is the rectifier tube over here and this is the oscillator based on the coil that I see right there. Uh, anyhow, it's a 35W4 and a 50B5 tube on here. And they look to be original. They're both RCA tubes. I'm not sure if that's what this unit came with or not. But I went ahead and I hooked this up and I tested it. And uh, it, it did work very, very marginally. I got a little signal out of it. But once I got more than a foot or two away from it, um, I could get no signal on the AM radio. So the function of this thing is to accept a, I believe, a line level or possibly speaker level input right here. And then uh, with the uh, oscillator right here, it adds the AM modulation to it and sends it out through this wire. You can see, I believe these are inductors right here. Sends it out through this wire. Then you can receive your photograph on your AM radio. And like I said, it, it does actually work, but I can only get it to work for a few feet. So I thought I would go ahead and test the tubes that are in this unit and see if they test good, bad, or indifferent. And uh, I was actually ready to give this back to the customer. Um, I have a drop-off point here in town that customers can bring their units and drop them off locally if they don't want to ship them. I had his reel-to-reel -reel repaired. I took it back to the drop-off point and dropped it off. And I told, well, it's my old boss. I worked for him for over 30 years in the TV repair business and told him, yeah, it might have a bad tube. I'm not sure. Uh, my tube tester that I have is a Hickok and it won't even accept these newer small base tubes. It's basically octal tubes only. And so he's like, well, didn't I give you a tube tester a few years ago? And I'm like, no, nah, I went out and I looked through my stash of stuff and it wasn't there. And he goes, oh, it's right here on the floor. Let me get it for you. So let me grab that and get it up here real quick. Okay, here it is, the B&K 747. And I haven't used this thing in years. I've used it thousands of times previous to that when I started working at this TV repair shop back in the early 80s. Uh, we would have to commonly test vacuum tubes. So let me go ahead and pull one of the tubes out. This is the 35W4. And I believe this one is going to be a rectifier. And uh, let's see, let me pull it back here. And it's, it's got a chart right here. So basically you look up the tube, 35W4, heater 35, sensitivity 11, socket number 30. Then you have to set these switches, A, B, F, C, C, and it's test number one. So let me get it back into position here. So what I say, socket... Socket number 30, there it is, heater 35, 
then we got to go A, B, F, and then this one is C, and this number 14 is C also. And so these switches are just configurations. They change basically which pins are the uh, the grid, the sc you know screen grid, control grid, the plate, things like that. I'm not sure if it changes the heater or not, or if there there was some kind of an industry standard at that time. I'm not too familiar. So I've got it plugged in to 125 volts AC. 35 and we want to set that to 11 so we'll power this thing on uh, you can see the light did yeah the light did light up it's a neon so at the frame rate of the camera 59.94 i think hertz and the acm incoming frequency at 60 hertz you can see that kind of flicker on and off due to the shutter of the camera anyhow i'm going to press the short button and see if we get a light over here and I don't grid emission so if the needle moves well that that's me I touch the face static electricity test number one wow that tube tests good and then we flick the, the uh, life test and it actually lowers the heater voltage and it still tests perfectly fine so we'll shut that one off so I know that tube is good and I'll pull out the 50 B5 Reset all those controls and uh, let me see, 50, I'm looking at the chart, I'm sorry, you can't see it. Heater 50, sensitivity 38, and socket number two. And so these are basically pre-configured sockets. You can see they have tube numbers on them right here. So there's no adjustment that needs to be done down here. The adjustments are only for these bottom sockets that are basically programmable sockets. Oh, look, it even says 50B538. So that's all there really is to it. So 50 volts, got it set at 38, power this thing on. And I uh, always wanna let it warm up for 10 or 15 seconds. This is dynamic mutual conductance, whatever the heck that means. I think it talks about positive and negative uh, cycles testing the tube as opposed to just a DC test. Uh, shorts, no light, grid emission, no movement, test one, and it's definitely in the bad range. And life test actually came up a little bit. I wonder what's going on with that. Life test is supposed to lower the heater voltage by like a volt or two or a percentage based on the voltage of the tube anyhow it definitely tests bad is the pot clean it hasn't been used in years so i know this is a wire wound pot so let me just wipe it back and forth a few times and retest it and we're still like at the exact same place i could turn up the sensitivity and get it to test good yeah, I don't understand what's going on there, but at the setting they specify 38, it definitely tests bad. So let me go ahead and see if I can find a replacement 50B5 tube for this thing. And uh, we'll put it back in there. Let me zoom down in on it. There we go. Good focus. Um, very nice construction, even though it's just a crappy little, uh, what's called a phono oscillator that lets you listen to your records on an AM radio. And it's supposed to transmit like throughout your house. It's probably only a few milliwatts of output. But uh, I took before and after pictures of this from different angles to make sure uh, I didn't damage anything. replacing these three capacitors that I changed and everything looks perfect as far as I can tell. I did unsolder everything 
and loop them back through the uh, the holes and solder them down. Everything to my eye looks fine. If uh, one of you eagle-eyed troubleshooters happens to see something, let me know. I did uh, check the value of these resistors. There is a 2.2 megohm resistor right there. And uh, what's this one? 150K. This one's a 33K and a 68K right there. I did go ahead and check those resistors. They check perfectly fine uh, with the tubes out, of course, with no power applied to the tubes. Unless it's in the heater circuit, I shouldn't, shouldn't see an, a resistance change. You can see the date code on that capacitor is 2213, so it's currently 23. Uh, what is it 30 something right now we're in the in the mid July and I did uh, as always use 105 degrees Celsius cap as a replacement so this 275 ohm resistor that you see right there is in series with the heater because uh, the heater is directly connected to the AC line so I've got the 50 volt tube and the 35 volt tube in series which does not add up to 120 125 volts AC so they put this resistor in series so that uh, there's no transformers. You notice this thing is uh, live, basically. Uh, would not pass UL <laughs> uh, standards by today. Anyhow, um, yep, that's it. This is going to be a part two. I'm sure I'm going to go on uh, eBay, Amazon, whatever, and try to find a replacement tube. And hopefully that remedies the situation. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Incidentally, if anyone does have a schematic for one of these, I would love to see it. Um, I do not like reverse engineering tube products, you know, although it can be done fairly easily. There's only like 12 components in this thing, so not even sure what company built this. He had it in a box. I was not paying attention when he dropped it off previously, but uh, yeah, if anyone has uh, a schematic on this, uh, leave it in the comments, please, or email me. Um, actually, leave me a comment first, so I know to check my email, because um, after the accident, I haven't checked my emails other than just a couple of times, and I've answered three or four emails, which is all I've had time for, because I get so many crap emails anymore. Um, we want to partner with you with this. We want you to sponsor this. I'll send you this and do a review. Blah, you know, clothing, uh, baby, baby clothes, uh, just you know whatever you can think of. Mood lights, bath salts. It just it, so many things. I just can't. I can't describe how many. Probably for one legitimate email, I get twelve to fifteen junk emails. Uh, yeah. Well, that's because I tell you what my email address is. Um, yeah, leave me a comment and uh, norcal715videos at gmail.com. Don't spam me. I will not answer. I just automatically delete and block those emails. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Bye-bye.